Hey guys, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking about my most disappointing books that I read in 2017. I do have 11 of them that I want to talk about. I am going to try, try to not go into too much detail about each one of them because um, chances are you probably know some something about them. Some of them are really popular. Um, but yeah, let's just let's just get started. I do want to say before we get started that I don't hate any of these books. I don't think any of them are inherently bad or terrible in any way. They just disappointed me somehow and I'll explain why as we get into them. Um, but the first one is Lost in a Book by Jennifer Donnelly. This is a YA like fantasy slash Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's not real. It's not a retelling. It's part of the new story that was created by the new movie that was released earlier on this year. This book was released to be part of the buzz that was created by Disney. Um, and this book really, it was just simple. It was cute. Um, I was disappointed because it just didn't portray my favorite characters the way that I was hoping that it would. It was just cute and fluffy. Um, this particular story takes place within the Disney Beauty and the Beast storyline right after the Beast gives Belle the library. And uh, she discovers this magical book in the library that when she opens it, it takes her to this magical world called Nevermore. And there's this dark force in the world that is trying to thwart the beast's plans to hopefully have Belle fall in love with them, yada yada. It's It was just cute. Um, it wasn't entirely disappointing because it I didn't expect a ton from it, but at the same time, I feel like all Beauty and the Beast retellings disappoint me somewhat because it's just not the original. I don't know, just I'm still forever on the hunt for the perfect Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, so that was book number one. Um, book number, oh, and I did give it a three three star rating. So it wasn't a terrible rating, but it just ultimately dis disappointing. Um, the next book also got a three star rating from me and that was The Mothers by Britt Bennett. Again, didn't hate it. I absolutely loved the writing. The storytelling was incredible. And Britt Bennett, I cannot believe that this is her debut novel. I believe it's her, her debut, debut novel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if it is, it's just, it's, is incredible the fact that that was her first work and the writing was that good but anyway um the mothers let's see i heard about this from molly over at molly reads she read it earlier on this year and she absolutely loved it and so i thought i would love it because molly and i a lot of the times we have similar reading reading tastes and she also just has a way of making me want to pick up every single book that she raves about she just has this way of like really making you want to read everything that she reads. I don't know what it is. Um, so I picked this up with really high expectations and I can see why she loved it because like I said, the writing was incredible, but a lot of the decisions that the main character made throughout the story really disappointed me and really made me angry. There is cheating in this book and hey, I mean, people, it happens in real life, it happens in books, but what really angers me, like really angers me, is when the characters in a book or just anybody tries to justify why the cheating is okay. I, I, can't, I can't listen to it. I just, I cannot. And the reasons that a character had for making these cheating decisions were not valid reasons. And I just, I don't know. I just, it really made me mad and it honestly brought the rating down from maybe like a four, four and a half star to a three star. It could have been a five star. It had that potential, like the writing was that good. I felt like there were some moments throughout the story where Britt Bennett really hit the nail on the head with some emotions. Um, and you know, those feelings that you get when you read a book where the writer is able to just really pinpoint a hard to describe emotion or situation. I love it when that happens. That happened a few times in this book, which I appreciated, but ultimately I was disappointed, mainly because of the cheating. It just, mm, it really got to me. Um, the next book that I wanted to mention was Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. This is another adult 
kind of contemporary drama slash life story. We follow our main character, Lillian Boxfish, who is an elderly woman. I believe she's in her late 80s. And in her prime, she was the highest paid woman in advertising in New York City. I believe she worked for Macy's. And we get to know her as she walks around New York City re reminiscing about her life. And I honestly thought I would love it. But to be perfectly honest, I was bored. I was so bored throughout most of this book. Um, there were a few moments that I found endearing. Um, some encounters that she had with some people around the city I thought were really sweet and funny. She definitely has a lot of personality, uh, Lillian does, but ultimately I didn't care about a lot that happened in the story and I just walked away just feeling kind of blech about it. So I think that got a three star from me. Yeah. Um, Next up is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Yeah, this might be a controversial opinion, maybe. I just, I gave this one three stars because it made me feel icky. Like the book did its job. I think it's supposed to make you feel icky, but I read for enjoyment. I read to escape. And I was left feeling so down after I read that book that I was just... I couldn't give it a higher rating. I just felt so icky and gross and it, I get that it's probably supposed to make you do that, but I was just, mm -mm, I was not having it. And I generally don't do well with dystopians that are trying to like pound a message into your brain anyway. Um, like I, I don't care for 1984. I didn't really care for Brave New World. Um, didn't care for The Handmaid's Tale. I. Um, another book on this list, I'll go out of order here, is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I didn't care for that one either because it has dystopian elements and I just, unless a dystopian is done in a really like fast paced, action packed thriller kind of way, I'm just not generally gonna be into it because I'm just like, okay, like it's a crappy world, we get it. I don't wanna read about this because some crappy things are going on in the real world, you know? Like that was just, how I felt after finishing The Handmaid's Tale. So I appreciate it for what it is and I thought it was fantastic in its own right, but enjoyment wise, three stars from me. Um, the next book that I wanna mention is When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. This is a YA contemporary. You've probably seen it everywhere. It does have an adorable cover. Probably the best part about this whole book is the cover in my opinion. That sounds harsh, but it's, I mean, that's just how I felt. I read this book for Booktubeathon in the summer. It was super quick and easy to get through. I did appreciate that about it, but it got a three star for me because it was just okay. This book had so much hype surrounding it and I don't feel like it lives up to the hype hardly at all. I appreciated the fact that this book features two young Indian teenagers, Dimple and Rishi. And I appreciated the fact that our main character, well, one of the main characters, Dimple, is interested in coding and technology. So we don't get a lot of YA, any like books really, but especially not YA contemporaries about Indian girls or boys. And we don't get a lot of books that feature females who are, especially young girls that are interested in technology and coding and creating apps and stuff. So I loved that about it, but we didn't get details about that. We did at the beginning, and then it just became just a romance and I was very disappointed by that. It could have been a lot better than it was. Everybody that was reading it just kept giving it five stars, five stars, it's so amazing, it's so cute. And it was cute at times, but it wasn't It wasn't that good. I really don't think it was. And I, I wouldn't not recommend it, but I would just tell you that it's really just a romance that has some elements of coding and we do get a diverse cast in terms of um, Indian American teenagers. So it was just okay. Um, next up is Unblemished by Sarah Ella. This got two stars from me. Did not like this. I don't think I would recommend it. Um, this is a YA fantasy, urban fantasy book about this girl who has a scar on her face and she is ridiculed for it in our world, but she gets transported to this fantasy world where it means something different. And um, it kind of marks her as being somebody special and unique in this world. And it was cute for most of the book. Well, for about half of the book. 
And then towards the end, we get a lot, a lot of info dumping that was incredibly confusing. And there were so many new characters being introduced all at the same time. And it just needed to be simplified a little bit. And I honestly think this book would be better as a middle grade story if it were trimmed down and simplified. And I don't know, she was trying to do a lot with this and I appreciated it because it has a lot of Christian elements in it, which I really enjoyed because I'm a Christian and I like seeing that in YA fiction because we don't get it at all, at least not that I've seen. So I did appreciate that about it, but it could have been a lot better than it was and it ultimately disappointed me. Um, I already talked about Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I found it a little bit strange and it just didn't really work for me. Um, it was just, it was very odd and I actually didn't rate this book because I liked it, but at the same time I didn't and I still, I'm conflicted about what rating I would give it. Um, the ending, like everything that confused me about the story all came together at the end, but it was, again, it was, it was kind of dark, definitely not an uplifting story and it just kind of made me it's really sad and down at the end. Um, the next book that I want to mention is The Deep by Nick Cutter. And this was my first thriller, not thriller, horror book ever. I hadn't read horror until I read The Deep. And the first half of the book is, was super cool. It was an action-packed, almost more of a thriller type of feel. And then the end got super weird and in incredibly gross, like incredibly gross. I found out through this book that I am not a fan of body horror. It was an experience and I made it through and I handled it, but I didn't enjoy it. So this book got three stars from me. Um, it's basically about this underwater mission to find this substance called ambrosia that's supposed to maybe cure this worldwide disease that's happening um, on the surface of the world. And it's just got real weird, real weird. Um, and it got three stars. Like the first half was much better than the second half in my opinion. Next up is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. I'm not really gonna go into this any more than I already have. Um, basically it's supposed to be a Jane Eyre retelling but I feel like some aspects about it could have been changed a little bit to make it more effective as a retelling. And I just, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. It was good. I gave it four stars. I wanna emphasize the fact that I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars, which is a really, really great rating from me. But I was disappointed because I think it could have been a five star had it not been for those little elements that I think should have been changed. Um, next up we have Since We Fell by Dennis Lehane. This is an adult thriller that I read for um, the Books and Jams read-along. I think it was in November, I'm pretty sure. Um, this got another three stars for me. It was just okay. Um, we follow our main character, Rachel, who struggles with agoraphobia and some show a lot of social anxiety. Um, and there's in this book, I found that there were three distinct parts. And I felt like all of these parts weren't connected as much as they could have been. And then towards the end, I feel like the ending had a lot of opportunities to connect all three of those parts, but it didn't very well. And it left me kind of wanting at the end and there's kind of an open ending and I was just like, but this book was so long and we spent all this time on these three distinct parts and there's not really a good resolution, I don't think. so. But overall, I really enjoyed the writing. I think I would pick up another Dennis Lehane, and that's why I gave it three stars, um, which is an okay rating, but I don't know. It just, it definitely disappointed me. And then the last book that I wanna talk about is Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire. This is supposed to be a Nutcracker retelling. I picked it up like a week ago, um, and I felt like it would be perfect for Christmas just to read around Christmas. I really like the Nutcracker story, so I was excited um, to learn, sorry, a little window popped up on my phone. Um, I was excited to learn that Gregory Maguire, the um, author who wrote Wicked and um, Son of a Witch, and a few others, quite a few others, um, that are fairy tale retellings, I was excited about this idea. But this book was so 
boring, you guys. It was so boring. I gave it two stars. I was so disappointed. Um, we get a lot, a lot, a lot of background information about Dirk Drosselmeyer, who's um, the godfather of Clara, who is the little girl who receives the Nutcracker. Um, most of the story is about Drosselmeyer, Drosselmeyer's background. And I just found that I didn't care. I wanted the actual story of the Nutcracker throughout the whole book, but really we just get Drosselmeyer's background story until the very, 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 very end, and then do we kind of get a Nutcracker story. Like, I just, I don't know. The writing was, for the most part, okay. There were some magical moments thrown in there that I thought were magical, and I just was expecting so much more, and honestly, I skimmed like the last 50 to 75 pages because I was just that done. I was just very, very disappointed. And I honestly, I don't think I would recommend it. I don't think it was terrible, but it was almost terrible in my opinion. I have a hard time saying that about any book because I, I try to be positive and find positive aspects to talk about. But honestly, I personally can't recommend it, sorry. <laughs> so those were the 11 most disappointing books that I read in 2017. Other than that, I feel like I had a really good reading year. Um, so comment down below. Let me know your thoughts if you've read any of these. Uh, I would love to talk about them with you. And let me know your best book that you read in 2017 rather than your most disappointing. I mean, you could tell me that too, but... Anyway, let's be positive from now on. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please um, give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you wanna see more bookish videos from me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.